talking about the tapeworm plant. So the Latin name of the tapeworm plant is Milnbeckia platycoda. Um, so that actually refers to the stem structure of it. Tapeworm plant, centipede plant, um, ribbon bush, those are a few of the common names that you'll hear for this plant. So these names came about by its physical appearance. So it's very strange looking, it looks like nothing else. Um, so it's actually a leafless plant that has ribbon-like stems, or it can also look like a tapeworm if you use your imagination. Uh, so you can find the tapeworm plant growing naturally in the Solomon Islands and Pacific area. So in the wild, you'd find this growing in an understory, so partly shaded underneath the trees, areas like that. Yeah, so this plant is a member of the Polygonaceae family, which is a very large family. So there are native species, the Pennsylvania smartweed, there's invasive species like Japanese knotweed, and there's also edible species like buckwheat there in this family. So aside from its physical look of being like a tapeworm, this plant also typically has no leaves. So it has photosynthetic stems, uh, so the stems are green, they look kind of like leaves, but are not botanical leaves, and they take over the role of photosynthesis for the plant. Yeah, so this plant is a flowering plant, it is an angiosperm. The flowers are very small, they're actually apetalous, so they do not have any petals, they only have stamens and bracts, and if they're pollinated, they'll form small black fruits. Yeah, so like everything about this plant, it's a little strange. So the seeds are actually three-sided, they are shaped like a triangle, so if you've ever seen a buckwheat seed, it's very similar to that, just much smaller. This plant would be mostly pollinated by flies, uh, things would be attracted to very small flowers, it's definitely not a bee or butterfly pollinated plant. Yeah, so it doesn't really rely on sexual reproduction that much. Uh, obviously it is able to do that as well, but its primary reproductive method is asexually. So you can cut a piece of it off and it will root and grow just like a tapeworm. Yeah, so the tapeworm plant makes a really good house plant. Uh, it tolerates low humidity, regular indoor conditions, bright light. It's also, like we said, easy to propagate, so it's easy to share as well. So in a household setting, you want to make sure it is getting enough light. Um, it is an understory plant, so it doesn't need a lot of direct sunlight, but it does require at least bright indirect light. You also want to make sure you keep it moderately moist. It can tolerate drying out in between waterings, but you don't want to let it uh, drought too much. Um, generally, people think about plants as being a leafy green plant in your front yard, but there's so many different forms, so many different types, and it's just intriguing to figure out why they are different, why they look like they do, why they are so strange in some cases. All right, in the upcoming months, we'll be looking at some more weird plants. One of the ones that we've seen is the Tetrastigma voinifera, the chestnut vine. This is the host plant for the world's largest single flower, which just happens to be a holoparasite that lives inside our life inside that vine. So one of the other plants we'll be looking at is this one here. So this is Mclennia pentaptera. This is related to uh, rhododendrons and blueberries. But this is really weird translucent fruits, which have a very interesting uh, ecology related to them. So we're looking at that. Okay. One of the other plants we'll look at is the giant corpse flower, the Amorphophallus titanum. So it has been about a year since we did a bunch of videos on these. So it's time to revisit it and look at some of the weird ecological interactions that this plant has. We'll also be looking at some bromeliads. Um, so bromeliads are very interesting. A lot of them are epiphytic growing in trees. And a lot of them have really cool interactions. We've already talked about the ones that have interactions with ants, myrmecophytic plants. So we're looking at some of these tank bromeliads that actually have whole ecosystems that live inside their water pitchers in the middle. 